Early access for Open the Show 23 is less than one week away. So in today's video, I'm going to go over what I'm going to be doing first as soon as the game goes live at midnight Eastern on March 24th. Now, the first thing I'm going to do once the game is live, obviously, we got to work through that tutorial out the gate. But once we're through that, I'm going right to my packs and ripping my pre-order bonuses along with all my Twitch drops that I've gotten. I think about the 10 or 11 Twitch drops right now. And I'm getting the digital deluxe version of the game. And that's going to give me my captain's choice pack, my world baseball classic player choice pack, my five gold choice packs, 20 show packs, one ball player pack, and 30,000 stubs. And of course, as I mentioned in the first market Monday of the year, with all that, I'm going to be selling it immediately. Every single card. I don't care if it's a diamond. I don't care if it's my trout. I don't care if it's a common. Every single card will be sold so I can get as much of a bankroll as possible. And I'm hoping by the time I get through selling all those cards between the gold player choice packs, if those are World Baseball Classic choice packs are sellable, the Captain's choice pack is sellable. Maybe I get lucky on one of my 20 show packs. Between everything, I'm hoping to be around 100,000 to 150,000 subs within the first hour or so of the game being out after selling everything combined with that 30k that I'm starting with. Now that I worked up that bit of a bankroll, I'm going to be utilizing the mobile companion app. I got me a fancy iPad this year, so I'm probably going to be flipping on this bad boy the entire time. That companion app is going to automatically update as well. If you've been wondering that, it should update. I think they said even before launch, it's going to go ahead and update. You won't be able to access anything. It'll be updated. So as soon as launch hits, the app will be live and you can flip on your phone. So that is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to have that up. I'm going to be logged in. I'm going to be flipping on my phone because it's a little bit more efficient time-wise there. I can better see the market there. And then I can multitask much more easily if I'm flipping on my phone and then taking advantage of playing the game on my console. The question, of course, is what are we going to play? Well, for me, after selling everything, I'm not going to have much of a team. So online for me, that's out of the question. We're throwing that away. I'm not going to be touching online night one we do want to be getting to there eventually so i gotta look to start building on my team somehow if there are non-sellable players that we can earn i am going to go after that if our team affinity guys are non-sellable i'm gonna be attacking that if they are sellable i'll probably still be working through that but then selling the rewards so i can continue to roll up my bankroll i can always come back and buy those later i will say team affinity is probably gonna be the first thing i have my eye on if it's like 20 and 21 a lot of showdown grinds is gonna get you through that but you're gonna get a lot of packs while we're doing that as well those packs early on are going to be super super valuable they're going to be inflated in price so i'm definitely going to be attacking packs early on and we're also getting this massive world baseball classic program that i don't really know the details of but i suspect there's going to be really good rewards in there and there's going to be over a hundred flashbacks from the world baseball classic including legends as well so that's probably going to be something early on i'm focusing on especially if those players are non-sellable that is going to be how i'm building out my team out the gate i'll take those non-sellable world baseball classic players i'll sell all my sellable cards and i'll rock a team with just those if those are sellable and they're not straight at quick sell value i may look at selling those as well and and again if there's some packs in there too that's even better for me give me those additional rewards so between team affinity world baseball classic those are going to be probably where my eyes are at first on programs that i want to start knocking out whether it be through showdown moments knocking out some of those offline things use that to build on my team that i can then go into events conquest mini seasons whatever i need to do to get more packs and free players i can start doing that with that team i built up likely from team affinity and the wbc content now the featured program for me is probably not going to be a focus out the gate because while i'm doing everything else i'm going to be getting xp and leveling up through that featured program but it's not going to be something we want to totally ignore especially with the addition of unlimited programs this year being able to get to the end of the program quickly and getting those repeat rewards that can even be upwards of a 50 bundle in packs can be really really huge so something like the ball player grind if it's back this year is going to be something i'm looking at for example here from 22 this is one of the silver perk packs you get early on through the ball player grind there are multiple paths that you're going through here with the ball player but you can see we're getting xp along the way 1750 creator video stubs doesn't really do us anything but all that xp adds up really really quickly we're getting through and then we get to our gold archetype here at the end and as you're getting through these not only are you continuing to get more xp again 3000 1750 1750 1750 that adds up really quickly once you get into the diamond archetypes as well you're going to be unlocking diamond equipment 
which can be 20, 30, 40, 50,000 subs early on if you get a nice equipment piece. So you're getting a ton of subs, you're getting a ton of XP to work you through that feature program, possibly even giving you team affinity progress as well. Who knows? what the tie-ins could be there. All player grind has been great the past couple years. It's not necessarily something I'm looking at doing night one, but as we get into the weekend, maybe I have 15 to 20 minutes here or there to grind out really quick. I can play a couple road of the show games, make some quick progress through those archetypes and just solely be working my way through that to unlock some more XP, hacks, stubs, etc. And again, with the unlimited programs, the quicker I can get to that in, the more chances I'm going to have to get those big rewards. And that could be a big key this year to take advantage of that. I mean, if it's every 25 to 30K at the end of a program, you can get that pretty quickly. Get some free packs. You never know what's going to be hiding in one of those. Now, at that point, I built up my bankroll because again, I've been flipping this entire time. Let's not forget that while I'm doing the ball player grind, grinding through a conquest map, team affinity showdowns, moments, etc. I'm flipping in between all of those moments that I have. And so I built up my bankroll quite a bit now. I've hopefully gotten a little bit of a diamond team pretty close to that. And from there, I'm likely going to start attacking events, maybe some battle royale as well. We'll save rank seasons for later on. That's likely going to be our lowest value in terms of time spent for what we're going to get as a reward. Events are probably going to be pretty high up on that value between getting those diamond event rewards, which early on probably aren't going to be too, too valuable, but can have some value and we're getting those free packs as we get deep in those paths same with battle royale we're getting all those bronze silver and gold flashbacks plus our program player plus our flawless player even if those are you know 20 30 40 000 subs a piece those are going to add up real quickly and as well with how they're changing things this year we could see even more value in those if we're getting 99s day one all year long i feel like it makes sense that battle royale would give us 99 rewards day one imagine something like mike trout finest card as a day one flawless reward and it'll be the show 23 that's not going to be a 40,000 sub card like we see early battle royale rewards were in 22. That's going to be a very, very expensive card. And so, you know, build up some subs. You could have enough entries and grind through that program, sell that card, and you got a ton of subs to work with. Got to be willing to sell, though. Don't be too worried about holding on to all your cards too tightly. We can always buy them back whenever we've cashed in on those roster updates, flipping, investments, all that. We'll come back. We'll buy back those cards. In summary, my weekend one plan, I'm ripping those packs. I'm selling everything. I'm using that to be flipping. And while I'm flipping, I'm probably attacking Team Affinity, the World Baseball Classic program out the gate. I may dabble a little bit in the ball player programs if there's value there. Featured program, I'm just going to gain as we're going through. Conquest, many seasons and events. I'm probably going to hold off onto those until I get a team together. And I need to do some stat-based missions, maybe to progress through Team Affinity or the World Baseball Classic program. Maybe I need to acquire stats with certain players to do so. I'll hold off on many seasons and conquests until I'm able to stack an entire team to knock out those missions at one time. We want to be efficient with what we're doing, especially early on. If after watching this video, you got any questions, feel free to hit me up down in the comment section below or swing by one of our Twitch streams. We will be live on launch night and launch day. Gonna be streaming a ton. I'll be there live to answer any questions you have. As always, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Until next time, I'll catch y'all around.